Welcome back to Strongman Personal Finance, everybody. We got an amazing ETF to review. The SoFi Weekly Income ETF. TGIF is the ticker symbol. Do you want a deposit into your Robin Stock account weekly? Do you not want to get paid bi-weekly like at your job or once a month, like if you get Social Security or something? Well, here's the ETF for you, apparently. Let's look into this ETF, which is, this is a sponsored video, by the way. Thank you very much, sir for paying me your life savings so I can review this ETF. So what is it all about? What is TGIF, SoFi Weekly Income ETF, all about? Basically, it invests in corporate debt. They buy corporate bonds, which is, you know, companies that need to borrow money, and those companies pay interest on their debt. And those interest payments, because of how, I guess, they're timed, how they, the active managers make it happen, is that you get a weekly deposit, a weekly distribution into your account from these corporations paying interest on the debt that you are, you know, through the ETF, lending these corporations money. So what are some of the risks, okay? There's lots of risks. Number one, you're lending a bunch of companies money. And if the economy goes south and a lot of companies start to struggle, you could potentially see the price of this ETF go down, okay? That's one risk. There's many other risks. There's interest rate risk. There's reinvestment risk. There's all sorts of risks that go into investing with bonds. But if you look at this ETF, <clears throat> it's decently diversified. It's got 100 bonds in it. I'm not going to say it's the worst thing in the world. So you're spreading your money over 100 corporate bonds. But the downside is, while you do get paid on Friday, this is an actively managed fund, which means your fees are going to be higher. So if we actually look at the fund's information, the inception date is October 1st of 2020, and the gross expense ratio and the net expense ratio is 0.59%. This is a very high expense ratio for a fund. And the question I have to ask you, young man, is do you really want weekly income so bad that you're willing to pay massively higher fees as opposed to monthly income. I get monthly income from a money market, a federal money market fund that's paying me about 5.5% annualized. And the expense ratio is like 0.1. Or I could just put it into a savings account or a CD and maybe not pay any fees at all. There's plenty of options out there that will probably give you monthly income or maybe even quarterly income but you pay much lower fees. But if you really like, if you just love that Friday deposit, okay, I don't know how many ETFs are out there that actually give you money on Friday, but it's more of a gimmick. It's it's really more of a gimmick than anything else. Oh, why, why not a daily ETF that pays interest daily? Anyway, let's continue reading about this ETF. So <clears throat> I went ahead and pulled up the holdings of this ETF and I did some really cool, amazing math. I made a pivot table and I was able to figure out what maturity date the majority of the corporate debt is what the maturity dates of the corporate debt in this portfolio are so here's a list of all the company or all the companies that have uh borrowed money from the fund aka from you uh and it's basically a bunch of corporations from what i checked 92 percent of the fund's assets are lent out to corporations there's some cash on the books there's some treasuries these are government debt basically risk-free okay but you look at the distributions of the maturities. What is the maturity? The maturity is when the bond has to be paid back. So for example, you see this maturity date right here on this AMC Networks bond. Basically the face amount, okay, the amount that you lent or the ETF lent up front to the corporation has to be paid back in full on 08 01 2025. So if you lend <clears throat> uh, AMC Networks $10,000 and then they pay you interest, at the end of the term, at when the bond matures on that date that I have highlighted, they will pay you back $10,000. They will pay back the face amount of the bond. Now, of course, the risk is AMC Networks goes bankrupt and then they can't pay you back. But if they can't pay you back, you will get paid back in full at the end of the term. That's one of the risks. That's why you want to spread out, not just lend to one company, okay? You want to lend to many companies in case one of them goes bankrupt. I'm pretty sure they had Credit Suisse bonds on here, which absolutely collapsed, you know, a couple months ago with all the problems. Here, here they are, right here. <laughs> That's hilarious. But anyway, so the vast majority of these bonds are expired, uh, correction, maturing 
within the next seven years. We can see the concentration of most of the holdings are between 2024 and 2030. Check out the pinned comment below and join our Discord community where you can ask me questions directly via text. And if you sign up for the highest tier, you can actually meet me in person every two weeks. So check out the pinned comment, join the Discord community, and let's make some money. So what that means is the interest rates that these bonds are currently paying. When the bond matures and the ETF buys new bonds, the current market conditions are going to set the interest rates that are going to be paid by the corporations in the future. For example, look in 2026, 21% of these bonds in this whole portfolio are maturing in 2026. So when 2026 comes around, <clears throat> ideally all the companies that have maturities in 2026, they're going to go ahead and they're going to pay back the fund, the face amount of the bond. And then the fund is going to take that money and they're going to go ahead and reinvest it. And here's all the companies that are maturing, if you're curious, in 2026. But basically, what you have to keep in mind is one of the risks of bond investing is, is what's called reinvestment risk, where your bond matures, so the bond is paid off, and then suddenly you find that interest rates have changed and you have to take whatever the market rate is at the time. So with this shorter term bond ETF, if interest rates get cut in the next year or two, and then interest rates are much lower than they are right now, the yield will probably go down is what I'm suspecting. So basically how bonds work is when interest rates go up, bond prices go down. When interest rates go down, bond prices go up, okay? So all these bonds that are maturing in 2026, 2027, as if rates get cut, theoretically, those bonds should mature or go up in price. That's what that means. So you gotta keep that in mind when you're investing with this fund. So this guy had a couple questions about this. So he said, do TGIF, using your accounting, what is the payout ratio of the fund and what are the dividends, are the dividends sustainable? Well, the payout ratio, <clears throat> honestly, I, I could not, I couldn't find like anything in the, uh, anything in the fund that indicated what the payout ratio was. But if you, if you think about it, you're basically getting the interest payments for, on the debt, net of the fees. So the, the bond holds this port the the company holds the holds this portfolio of bonds. The bonds pay interest. The the company takes their cut because they got to pay them themselves salaries and you know pay the fund manager or whatever all the other crap that goes into it. And then the rest goes out to you. So the you, you will continue to get interest payments. You you'll still you you will get interest payments. But the payout ratio, I'm not sh exactly sure how to calculate that because this isn't like a company with net income where you, uh, you're you calculating the payout ratio. This is just a collection of bonds that are paying interest. So as long as the companies don't go out of business, you're going to get your interest payments and it's gonna, but the, the bonds are going to mature at whatever dates they mature based on the numbers that I showed you earlier. But at the end of the day, what the biggest risk is that if interest rates go down, the yield that you're seeing once those older bonds mature, and then the company invests in new bonds that are maybe have lower interest rates at that time, the yield could go down. I don't know what's going to happen to freaking interest rates. I have no idea, okay? But if rates get cut, <clears throat> yes, what, you, you face the risk of reinvestment risk where the new bonds that the fund will buy in the future when the current bonds expire may have lower interest rates. So you may see lower yields into the future. Now, if the Fed keeps raising interest rates and everything's high rates, okay, maybe you'll see higher rates. Maybe you'll see higher interest rates. But that's kind of predicting the future, and I don't really know what the Fed is going to do, okay? So this next question is, are there any bond index funds or ETFs with a low uh, expense ratio and the same yield-wise you think are better? So I, I can't recommend a specific ETF. What I will say is that the bond, this ETF, I mean, the only reason anybody would invest in this is because they want to, of Friday deposits. That's just not a reason to invest in an ETF. You can get most ET, a lot of ETFs pay monthly or even savings accounts pay monthly. <laughs> you know, um, money market funds pay monthly. There's so many more options out there where you don't have to pay such an egregious expense ratio and have active management and when you can instead just park your money in somewhere that's probably even safer, not even in corporate debt, okay? 
I mean, I personally like Vanguard. You know, I'm not saying to buy any of these, but there's plenty of bond funds on Vanguard that have much lower expense ratios. You know, before you buy one, though, you got to keep in mind there's all sorts of risks that go into bonds. Bonds aren't risk free, okay? Like, for example, this total corporate bond ETF. This is like, I wouldn't say this is similar, but the ETF that you're looking at has corporate debt. This has corporate debt, but the profile is probably entirely different. For example, the portfolio composition, let's see, it's got 40% short-term corporate bonds, 33% uh, long-term corporate bonds, and Vanguard 27% uh, intermediate-term bonds. So this is like a total market bond. It's exposed to basically every type of bond, every type of maturity of uh, bonds out there. Like, yeah, okay, here we go. This one has 7,267 bonds. Okay, the average coupon, the actual interest payment is 4%, and the current yield is 5.5%, which means bond prices have gone down. That's basically what that means. When interest rates go up, bond prices go down. So the fund is yielding basically what the, the market rate is. So this is an option. I mean, but you, you got to understand there's risks. You know, if interest rates get cut even more, this, this fund could depreciate. If interest rates get cut, the bond fund will probably go up. If there's a huge recession, you know, and a lot of these corporations start going bankrupt, you could see massive losses in this fund. There's there's so many risks that you have to consider with buying a, uh, you know, any, any investment. You can't just buy one and be like, oh, it's good. But th there's tons of options out there. I would just say focus more on expense ratio than yield. Because usually the higher the yield, the more risky. And the higher the expense ratio, especially with bonds, especially with bonds, the higher the expense ratio, the more it's going to cut into your profits. <laughs> so you, you really want to be careful with that, okay? But at the end of the day, you know, my, my advice always stands. Don't yield chase. Don't just buy something because it pays. Oh, it pays uh, daily or, you know, every other day or something like that. Buy something that is sustainable and will... You know, not destroy you with fees. I, I can't predict where this fund is going to go, but I can tell you if interest rates get cut, eventually as bonds mature and they buy new bonds, those bonds will probably have lower yields. That's just how it is. You know, I'll, I'll, corporate debt is benchmarked based off of, uh, you know, basically the risk free rate. You know, everything's based off the risk free rate. And the more risk you take on, just theoretically, the higher the yield you pay. So let's see if there's any other questions. If the fund owns a bond and interest rates go up, what happens when the bond matures? Okay, this is this is an easy question. If you own a bond, <clears throat> a fund owns a bond, you own a bond, whatever. When a bond matures, as long as the company doesn't go bankrupt, they will pay back the full amount. So if you lend the company $10,000, $10,000, and then 10 years passed and the bond matures, when you get the, you will get that $10,000 back. If the company does not default or there's some kind of restructuring going on, that's theoretically how bonds work. So even if interest rates go down, the price of your bond may go up, the price of your bond will fluctuate. But at the end of the day, if you hold the bond to maturity and the company does not default, they will pay you back the face amount. That's how bonds work. Okay, so when you see the price fluctuations of, uh, you know, these ETFs, it's because interest rates are changing, but the underlying bonds themselves, as long as the companies don't default, you'll get your, or the fund will get its money back. <clears throat> so the question you have to ask yourself is like, if you need the money in the short term, do you really want to, let's say you want to, you know, put money in this fund and then maybe you need the money in a year. Well, what if interest rates go up even more and then the bond drops and the fund drops in price even more? Well, all of a sudden, you're, you're probably sitting on a loss, and then you have to sell it to use the money. So you, you got to be careful when you're buying this stuff. It's not risk-free. <laughs> Does the fund lose money or get their initial investment back? So the, if the company pays, if the company does not default, you they will get the initial investment back. But if you're buying into the fund and you're selling out of the fund and interest rates change, Yes, the price of the fund at that time will fluctuate, but the bond in and of itself isn't, you're not going to get less back or the fund's not going to get less back from the, uh, from the maturity, from the uh, face amount. So that's basically it. I mean, just to reiterate with the payout ratio, you know, 
it, it's a bond fund. It, they're, it's ultimately determined by the rates that they can lock in when they buy the funds. If rates go down and those bonds mature, and if you see a lot of them are maturing in the next couple of years, you have reinvestment risk where the new bonds that this fund invests in may have lower interest rates. So that could potentially lower the yield, but that's going to be across the board. It's not just going to be in this fund. Uh, there's When it comes to index funds, I can't tell you one that's better. But there's, there's plenty of funds out there that don't charge 0.59. You just have to make sure you consider all the risks and think about when you need the money. And then I think I explained this pretty thoroughly. So that's it. That's the SoFi quarterly dividend or uh, weekly interest ETF. I personally don't like this. I think the expense ratio is way too high. And it's basically in a bunch of corporate debt. I mean... I don't know. I, I, I have money in a money market fund that's paying me 5.5%. Why would I buy this <laughs> when I could buy a money market, that, a federal money market in the United States at least, that pays me 5.5%. So hopefully that answered all your questions. Hopefully you all learned something from the video. Bonds are not risk-free, and you need to be careful when you're buying bond funds because you can lose money even though it has a high yield. And I'll talk to you later. Cheers!